Kinetic molecular theory is our model for the behavior of gases. We treat gases like they are tiny particles that travel in straight lines until they collide with other objects, and it has some basic assumptions. Now, these are a lot of the assumptions that lead us into the ideal gas law, but since this is general behavior of gases, kinetic molecular theory will apply whether or not we're treating something like an ideal gas. So, well, I mean, we still have the same assumption that we had with the ideal gas law in the first, which is that the particle size is negligible, right? The, a gas molecule, it's by itself, it's really tiny. We're gonna say that the size is negligible. We will see the limits of that when we look at the next video, but it's a good assumption that works. The other thing that we have, so the second point, the average kinetic energy is proportional to the temperature in Kelvin. So we have like, or I feel like I've internalized this. I don't know if you have internalized this idea that um, a higher temperature, right? It's more energy. That energy that you're thinking about, right? I mean, it may have been transferred as a thermal energy, but like it's stored as a, or it exists in the motion of the gas molecules. So we can think about increasing the temperature of something being the same thing as increasing the average kinetic energy. And because kinetic energy is one half mv squared, two samples that have the same temperature have to have the same average kinetic energy. So the mass of the molecules in those samples will affect how fast the particles are traveling in order to have that kinetic energy. So lighter molecules must move faster to have the same kinetic energy as heavier molecules. And then third, again, same assumption from ideal gas law, the collisions are elastic. There's no loss of energy when they run into each other. So temperature and velocity. At a given temperature, lighter particles travel faster than heavier ones. This is on average. This is based on our second assumption in kinetic molecular theory. We use the root mean square velocity to be the velocity of the gas particle. Now, I don't know why it's a U and not a V, but it's URMS for the root mean square velocity. We do this because there's a range of velocities, right? Every particle will not be traveling the exact same velocity. There will be some kind of range. And so the root mean square, it is what it sounds like. It's the square root of the square of the average of the velocities. I, I'm not going to ask you to get each of those velocities and average them and come up with this, but that's how we get this. The average kinetic energy for one mole of particles, so we can bring in some Avogadro's number. Now, it looks like it gets more complicated, but then it simplifies out, which is really kind of nice. This average kinetic energy is one half Avogadro's number times the mass times the um, mean velocity squared. So that's one half mv squared, but with Avogadro's number in there. If you put all of this together with units and everything else, for many gases, this comes out to be three halves RT, which at a given temperature, that's just a constant. So the average kinetic energy is three halves RT in, right, I will tell you when you can use this equation. It also means that one of the ways you could calculate the root mean square velocity is by taking the square root of three RT over the molar mass. Now for this to work and cancel out with everything in joules, in this equation, your molar mass does have to be in kilograms per mole. Okay, so let's like get a picture of what this looks like. So 
I have what I'm going to do is make a graph. It is the variation of velocity with molar mass. So we're going to pick one temperature. So the average kinetic energy has to be the same for all samples. And then we're going to kind of plot what their velocities would look like. So my y-axis is number of molecules and my x-axis is velocity. And so it's not just like a line where 100% of the molecules have the same velocity at this given temperature. I'm going to have a kind of like a bell curve. So for O2, which has a molar mass of 32 grams per mole, right, I have this hump where there's the highest number around a certain velocity. But I have a range of velocities for all of the O2 molecules in my sample. Water has a molar mass of 18 grams per mole. So in order to have the same kinetic energy, it has to move faster. So what that means is that my peak is like broadening out, but the tallest point of it is moving to a higher velocity velocity. So on average, these molecules have a higher velocity, but there are some that are slow, there are some that are, that are really fast. It averages out to a higher velocity and we see a peak at a higher velocity. Then H2, right now it's only two grams per mole. This is much farther out. So we still have a range of velocities, but my peak has pushed up to a much higher velocity because my molar mass has gotten to be so small.